this is um overlord kevin kleinrock if you don't know who the hell he is i don't know why you're watching a podcast on the lucha central podcast Network. <laughs> if you don't know who he is um he that's is an one impressive of, backdrop by he's the way. one of the jefes <laughs> at mass republic and they have this little thing called um what is it called expo lucha that would be appropriate, yes. What the fuck is going on with Expo Lucha this year? I hear it's like yeah. out of control and you've done way more than you probably should do for the fans, as usual. This one has been a journey, man. I mean, we, <laughs> we announced this one for 2020 uh, at the 2019 Expo. And then tickets for it went on sale in October of 2019. And uh, it's only taken us, you know, nearly three years to get here. And, uh, but we're excited, uh, you know, other than obviously the, the health concerns anybody has leaving their house today. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. This is my first live event that we've, well, I think Master Public has been producing events, um, for the last couple of years. Uh, we had a number of shows. We've done three sold out shows with Ago Caliente Casino in, um, Cathedral City down in the, the desert. Yep. Uh, we just did a taco and tequila festival in Kansas City last weekend. But, you sold uh, wait, you sold one of those shows out, and you were running against some other heavy fucking hitters that day too. Yeah, I yeah, remember we, seeing we, that, and I was like, "Oh my god, Klein Rock did a thing." Well, <laughs> and, and the thing I haven't even been. Ruben's been running all that stuff. I have I've had very little participation in the. Um, uh, I haven't gone to any of these live events, uh, and and I haven't really. These are all Ruben's deals. Um, which, you know, I miss going to events, but it's really kind of good that we've grown to a place where he can kind of run his operations, which are more the live events um, right. and talent relations. And I'm running our kind of entertainment content development and our licensing, um, keeping busy kind of separate but together. And uh, so this is the first Mass Republic live event I will have been to since the pandemic started. And so, you know, it's a massive one and we're excited. Um, Kevin, you got to answer this guy's question. He wants to know when Expo Lucha is coming to Australia. To I think the, the question is, would? Yeah, hell yeah, we would. I, Australia is one of those countries I've wanted to visit ever since I was young, and I've yet to Oh, don't bother. I could, Just shit's all. I, <laughs> uh, you know, I we, we have some hard opinions. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they did send all their convicts there to start. I mean, that's, that's where the country came from, right? I mean, and you know. somehow they missed Meatloaf. We don't know <laughs> yeah, what that happened, well, but... Uh, uh, no, I mean, I, listen, our, our goal with Expo Lucha is to take it worldwide. You know, we purposely started with Las Vegas the first year and then San Diego. Um, you know, the, the whole point of taking it to Philadelphia for 2020 was because it was the 25th anniversary of Ray and Psychosis, uh, Conan and Hoovy showing up in ECW. And, you know, it's not just hyperbole to say that that changed pro wrestling, that the infusion of those guys, because when, when I will say, I will say hands down that for me personally, mm -hmm. as an ECW fan, I came in a little bit after that, not, not a ton after that, but those guys weren't there then. And I, I went all the way to fucking Philly with a bunch of buddies in a car from Cleveland and we went to our first ECW show. At that first ECW show that I ever saw live, I'd seen a few hardcore TVs or whatever, people were talking about that stuff. And I didn't know what the fuck it was. I didn't know who Rey Mysterio was. I didn't know any of the stuff. Then it was probably two shows later, um, somebody, it wasn't even a full tape trade. Like I got to hold somebody's tape for a couple <laughs> of days and it had the stuff on there. And I was like, what the fuck? What is Lucha Libre? What? Like literally I am a wrestling fan that learned about Lucha Libre hands down from what you're talking about. I can personally attest to like it changed wrestling because guys like me were like, Oh my yeah, God. Sure. And then those guys showed up in East, uh, WCW and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And which wasn't very long after that. And it was just, and, I'm, no. and then I'm telling people like, fuck people throwing Coca-Cola's at Hulk Hogan. You need to watch <laughs> this dude that's coming up next. You need to watch Psychosis. You need to see Rey Mysterio. You need to see these guys. Yeah. And, and, and so for us, I mean, and that's the show that we're doing Saturday night is called Under the Influence of Lucha Libre because it's, it truly was, you know, when Worlds Collide had happened, if you were a Lucha fan, it was an awesome time because Lucha Libre was finally kind of breaking through in the United States, at least in the major markets in LA and Chicago. I mean, I remember the LA times article cause I'm, I'm from Los Angeles. I remember the LA times article 
the day after the one of the sports arena events sold out and it was just like thousands of people were turned away but i only knew about that because i was in los angeles i was in a market where it was running and ray and and, and nicho and the others coming to ecw was really the first time that it was truly integrated into american pro wrestling mm -hmm. and that just changed the game not just in terms of the product at the time there's a whole generation of stars that mm -hmm. have now grown up wanting to be ray and wanting to be Nicho and wanting to emulate that style. I mean, that's even why, like, the opening match that we're doing on the show on on Saturday, which we'll stream. Uh, I guess you'll hear. I guess we're gonna we're gonna breaking news. If, if in case people couldn't figure it out, it won't be officially announced until tomorrow morning. But uh, this will stream on Fight. So anyone around the world oh, will be able to watch this uh, seven match, just jam packed show. Uh, on fight on uh, on Saturday night um, in English or in Spanish, uh, and the opening match is. Wait, is Kevin guys. Gill doing the Spanish broadcast? What was that? Is Kevin Gill doing the Spanish broadcast? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Jesus, uh, aka Ricardo Rodriguez, uh, will be uh, will be doing Spanish with uh, guest luchadores joining him throughout it. Oh, that's and dope. Then the, the English will be. Uh, the team that I put together for AAA, which is uh, Joe Dombrowski and uh, and Larry, uh, so they'll be doing the the English uh, commentary. Um, so, Pray to God that Hoovy gets the mic. What was that? Pray to God that Hoovy gets the microphone. I mean, there 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 has been a, a very, there's a very classic Hoovy promo from that arena. Uh, the last time I let him have a mic in that building and. And so, you know, I <laughs> look, he can cut any promo he wants as long as he sends me a mad t shirt before he does it. If yeah, not, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> silence him, I'm gonna hoovy driver his ass, send that shit back to Michinoku and tell him to fuck off because I want my goddamn shirt, hoovy. Wherever you are, if you're listening to this, I want my shirt still. I'll always love it it dead. Now it's a point of pride. I want the goddamn <laughs> shirt. All right, so let me uh, let me ask you this though. All right. Erase what you know, Kevin. Erase what you know for a minute. I'm a wrestling fan. I've seen a little bit of the WCW stuff. I like some of the Lucha Doors. I like Penta and Phoenix and AEW. I maybe watched a couple episodes of Lucha Underground. Tell me why I'm showing up to the 2300 Arena. Tell me why I care about Expo Lucha 2022. All right. Well, so there's two different things, right? So showing up in person there's no convention like this on the planet. This is the Comic Con of Lucha Libre. You're going to be able to go and stand face to face and meet icons and legends and current hottest stars of Lucha Libre. Ultimo Dragon, Dragon Lee, uh, Laredo Kid, Taurus, uh, Damien 666, Psychosis. Uh, again, you know, legends and, and current stars. And you get to meet all of them, walk right up to them, shake their hand, take your photo. Buy official merchandise, buy masks directly from guys from Mexico that don't normally travel. Even if they travel to the United States, they're not normally uh, in Philadelphia. It's very rare to be in, in the Philly market. So you've got just the fact of when we did San Diego, there was a guy who I would say he's probably in his 30s. And he came up to me like literally tears in his eyes about getting to meet Octagon because he said he's like, I grew up and he was my hero. and to think that I would actually like the, the thought of meeting him in person one day never even crossed my mind. It was just, you know, there was no way I was going to meet this luchador from Mexico here in the United States. And so it's experiences like that, that you can't get at most other places. And even if you go to a, a lucha show with these stars, it's not the whole expo experience. And on top right. of that, you know, we're, we, we've been integrating more and more convention type of aspects. So there'll be two panels on Saturday. Uh, one on the past and present and future of Lucha Libre action figures. Uh, one of the best, maybe the maybe the most uh, world-renowned expert on Lucha Libre action figures, Roy uh, Roy Lucier, will be there along with um, uh, four reps from Boss Fight, the creators, uh, the sculptors, the uh, designers of the Legend of Lucha Libre line. And they all came from Hasbro. We've got some great stories. Amazing uh, line, by the way. So, One of the few collectibles that I have at all. It's and I don't know stuff. if you saw the the live unboxing last night on YouTube that they did of the Fanaticos, but those figures have taken a long time to come out <laughs> because of COVID. <laughs> but right. like the Taya figure is seriously, I think, one of 
if not the best female action figure, wrestling action figure that's ever been made. It's so good. Uh, her likeness is better than any pictures that have been seen of it from the original kind of uh, original uh, prototype and everything. Right. It's amazing. Uh, the new uh, uh, the new Hoovy, which is his ECW era Hoovy, is great. A uh, Penton Phoenix, their new versions are great. And this lost me. Uh, this line. So when our first figures it sold out, the original Penton Phoenix premium line came out. Those the premium line is the one that comes with two heads and multiple sets of hands and accessory, and it's cost around around thirty eight dollars. So it's not it's not for everyone, right? Not there's a lot of people that won't spend that much money. So we always knew from the beginning that we wanted to do a more affordable line that the kind of average collector fan could could get. So the Fanaticos line is about eighteen to twenty one dollars, depending on where you get it. It's we stopped calling it our basic line because it's still more articulated than any of the the WWE or AEW figures out there. Um, so it, it's an incredible line. It's just a slightly less articulation than the premiums. Um, but still, you can put them in pretty much any wrestling move. Uh, you can pose them a, a million different ways. And the parts are actually swappable with the premium line. So, you know, you can swap your heads and swap your, your torso totally and dope. swap your legs. And um, all the people from Boss Fight are seriously into customizing figures like in their own you know lives. And so um, these are kind of made specifically as well for like the wrestling action figure customizers and stuff so uh yeah really excited and we're gonna have some more announcements uh updated art for some of the figures that have been announced previously plus we'll announce some other new products with boss fight um this weekend as well so really excited about that and then we have a panel about the history of lucha and ecw where psychosis and uh, uh super crazy will be part of that panel fans will be able to ask questions about that era I'm a big fan of Super Crazy, by the way, because like I said, I, I was going to more shows later on, so that was the luchador that I got to see in person yeah. several times, and those matches and the tajiris, like, just fucking ridiculous to me. And to, and again, he's one of those guys I like, he's kind of like Mac or some of those guys that don't look the part necessarily. Like, you don't yeah. think he's going to be able to physically do some of the things that he does, and then you're like... Oh shit, that guy just did what? I don't even know what the name of that move is. And it was crazy and it was awesome. And then he's just smiling. He's just happy. He's getting the shit beat up. Like, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, he's great. I mean, he, he's, I've worked with him um, on and off throughout the years. He did a run in XPW. Um, we crossed paths and he's just, he's such a great guy. He's, he's always been so good. Is he really people. always that happy? Yeah, he's, he's, all, he's, he just he's seems like a joyous person. Genuinely, just kind of, you know, easygoing, mellow dude, um, which is great. I always appreciate that. Um, and then we've got one of the other cool things that we're doing that we haven't really had time to do in hype yet, but um, our friends at 2K uh, have given us a plethora of uh, WWE 2K22 video games. And we are going to have a little tournament where on Saturday, uh, the attendees can face off against our luchadors one-on-one -on -one in a game of WWE 2K22. And any of the attendees who beat a luchador are going to qualify for Sunday. Where we'll do a single elimination tournament and uh, we'll be giving away prizes for, uh, for those who, who come in uh, in the, uh, in the top brackets of that, of that tournament. That sounds fun. That's good stuff. That sounds up Byron's alley. How much? Yeah, that's super cool. I already have um, 2K22, but I definitely would lose to any of those. Luchadors. But you don't have the grand prize, which is the What's that? super promo, Ray, the Rey Mysterio promo pack that all the celebs and influencers got. That's the grand prize. Oh, okay. Then I need, all right. <laughs> See, there's reasons. There's That's methods awesome. to the madness. And I love the fact that you guys are doing it at 2300 or whatever they're calling it now. Yeah. The, the not so ECW, ECW arena. That uh, last time I was in, um, we were, it was a little scary because it was a it was a more COVIDy time. But I was fine. I was totally fine at that show. Well, Ryan, what? however, got rabies on his face. I got <laughs> I got COVID from that trip. Uh, I I don't know if it was. But Byron, the, the how show? many people can say they got COVID at the ECW arena? Okay, can we Come not on. can we not hype that right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I think I got it from the Lyft driver on the way to the airport because he talked a lot about Much how better. I That's take better. vitamins. You know, I take care of my body. <laughs> uh, That's probably where you got it from. That's a euphemism. We speculate that. Vitamins. Uh, anyway, no, it, it does sound like an awesome event 
Um, yeah. So you said how many matches? Seven? It, so, so Seven on Saturday. Seven on Saturday. So, and if you attend the expo during the day on Saturday, there'll be some matches as part of our Viva La Lucha showcase. Uh, we've got a match from Pro Wrestling Revolution in Northern California. We've got a match from uh, Full Blown Pro Wrestling in Texas. We've got a match from uh, Lay Valley, or Lee Valley uh, Athletic Club in, in uh, the Philadelphia area. And there'll be a few more matches. So that's kind of our independent showcase during the day. If yeah, because you, have, see, uh, you know that's what I would that's what I would be all about is like yeah. I want to just I want to see the dudes go I want to see the young Absolutely. guys I want to see the new styles what what people are doing I want to see the masks and the you know what people are wearing and, and you know especially when you get a it's weird too because a lot of us wrestling fans you see Lucha Libre and it's weird at first because you think of Lucha Libre and you think of seeing one guy in a mask or maybe a couple guys but when you start seeing a lot of masks and comparing mm. them and what they mean then you start i honestly when i see multiple luchadors together i understand their masks better because you see the different nuances you see the different styles and people don't realize how much time and thought is put into some of these things just like how much time wwe puts into designing a character and what they're going to say and do on tv that is the mask in lucha libre that it has to convey a story the second those guys get in the ring a lot of times because there's not a ton of mic work or other stuff like the story's there so you see a lot of luchadors together and it's it, it's like it's something it's fun that that'd be the shit i'd be there for first and foremost yeah that's just me well I'll, 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 when do you think there's a chance to do uh to add another special attraction match uh called the mmm show open challenge where where justin and Miflo have to fight anyone from the audience who doesn't like their faces Mm. Well, I mean, I'll fight well, Taco Club. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, See, there, we, we got time to work some stuff in. You're going to put that out there. I may be them. showing up at this thing contracts. on short notice and begging Kevin to let me in the back door. So don't do that to me. Whoa, whoa. Be careful, Kevin. He does that quite often. We're a corporate podcast. We got to watch the, the language. Did I say that right? I got all the words. I got the key words, Kevin, I got I got begging, and backdoor, right? I said all the right things in the sentence, didn't I, Byron? No, slip you. It. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, slip it. I, okay. <laughs> Correction noted. Um, so, Justin. have you slept, Kevin? Uh, not not enough, but yes. Uh, no, we, we uh, we're, we're, can always use more staff. Uh, but we're we're getting. Oh, by. so I can come and work uh, the show? What yeah, for free? So I can come and work Expo? Oh yeah, hell yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, but but uh, yeah. So and then Saturday night with the show, seven matches. Uh, if you if you hit uh, expolucha dot com slash ppv, you can see all the matches. Um, and like I said, if you're not going to make it out to Expo, they they will be streaming live on Fight TV starting eight o'clock. Uh, I won't run down all the matches because um, a lot of them are multi men and, and will be here all night. But um, Dragon Lee versus Laredo Kid one on one, which is a triple A main Ooh. event on any pay per view, um, that's going to be uh, a huge match. And it's funny because we signed that match as our main event three years ago, or whatever it was. Ago, yeah. Yeah. I remember before Dragon Lee was that. even in triple A. Uh, we've got Ultimo Dragon against Super Crazy. That should be wow. just uh, you know a really fun kind of throwback match. Um, we've got Psychosis. We asked Psychosis to pick a talent that he thought had the future star potential. I mean, ever, there's been so many like next Ray Mysterios. I hate to say next Ray Mysterio, right? Because there's only ever going to be one Ray Mysterio. Right. We asked him to pick, you know, who is that next buzzworthy luchador? He picked uh, Astrolux, aka uh, Drago Kid. Um, from from Triple A, so they're gonna team up against uh, Damien Seis Seis and Demus, who uh, at one point was kind of the the mini Damien Six Six Six, and has now become the arch rival of uh, Astro Luke's on the indie scene. So that should be a really great tag match. Uh, we've got a really fun three way dance because it's the ECW arena, and you got to do a three way dance in the ECW arena. But it's the lucha style three way dance, so it's mixed tag three way. So you got Lady Maravilla. And Sam Adonis against uh, Mr. Iguana and Kira against Reina Dorada and Papadon. So it's five uh, AAA wrestlers, and then Papadon from New York, uh, who every time we've gone to Philly uh, or I've done stuff in Philly over the last number of years, the East Coast, we've been using Papadon. Great, great talent. 
not a luchador, more of your Dean Malenko right. uh, wants to get in there and stretch the luchadors and prove that Greco-Roman wrestling is uh, a tech true guy. wrestling. And, and, and with Iguana, great. that should be super fun because that dude folds in half from everything yeah. I can tell. <laughs> like, literally, he can just be in a suitcase if you need it. He can bump sideways off of a tape. Like, his yeah, body Iguana's is good. very malleable. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Which uh, may or may not be a good thing for him. I don't know. That's yeah. um, that's a good match, though. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that that uh, that uh, you find that it's worth the money. I think everyone. I, that's the thing. You know, we've been growing the audience over the years. Um, obviously, uh, this this one is just is not going to be as big as the last few because it's in the 2300 arena and you can only fit like 800 people in that building. Um, but that's part of why it's good. That's yes. part of why a show there is good. You are Very part intense. of the show. There's a reason why yeah. that that play, you know. And I've mm-hmm. seen ECW in there. I've seen MLW in there. And this would be a, a, an amazing addition to all the things that have happened in that building with wrestling. There's a reason why wrestling fans go there. It's a yeah, wrestling and I, building. And I think that even though, I, you know, uh, we might not, our expos might not have had, you know, 5,000 people at each of them. But the people that have gone, I mean, uh, it's a huge testament to me about Expo Lucha that we have our like VIP gold and platinum tickets we put on sale that are like the the, the biggest bundle you can buy, and we have people that have traveled the world or you know the, yeah the world definitely the United States but and then some with us now who have gone to all three of them or have gone to two and are coming to this one because there's no other experience like this. I mean even dare I say even going down to a Lucha Libre show in Mexico City. Yes, you're going to see a card full of luchadors, but you're not going to get the rest of the expo experience. You're not going to get. Yeah, I mean, most of those guys are wrenching on dude. Fords during the week. Like they, they're not all full timers no. at most shows these days, unless you're at a big AAA A show. Like you're yeah. going to see some good stuff and some, you know, new guys, like you would yeah. at any indie show. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we're we're, we're it's going to be great. Um, excited, very excited, and uh, yeah, we'll have. A ton more merchandise announcements and license announcements and and other things coming at Expo Lucha and throughout the summer. Uh, it's going to be a big summer for us. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've been working on in the licensing space or in the entertainment space, as you, I mean, you all know, you know, because you work in the entertainment world. Uh, this stuff doesn't take weeks or months; it takes years, years. Yeah. years. Uh, and so we've got licensed products. We've got entertainment related, pro, uh, you know, things that have been in development for, for years, especially with the pandemic. Um, a number of products that we sign pre pandemic um, will be announced throughout the summer, released throughout the summer. So it, it's going to be a very big summer for us. We're very excited. And it all starts, I guess, for us this weekend in uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. And, and look, every company's got to start somewhere. So people don't get it. But it's like, look, Disney is working on stuff for 2028 right now. Literally, that's what Disney is. That's what all the executives and marketing people and licensing people, they're doing 2028 and 2029 right now. Yeah. But they've also been doing it for, you know, a hundred years. So they've got a leg up on you. But once you get the flow going of your licensing and everything, then it's a different story. So what Mm -hmm. you're doing now hopefully pays off four years from now. And this is the shit that, you know, when we started doing stuff with Kevin that he was working on and telling us about back then, and here it is, it's starting to come to fruition. So congratulations to you and to Ruben and, and like this show looks amazing. And I'm glad you guys were finally, finally able to pull it off and and that you're doing it in Philly still. And that that didn't go away as well. Cause that's, yeah, that was important to us. That was important to us. I mean, we, yeah, we, we never wanted to cancel it. We, you know, it, it was painful to keep having to postpone it, but we, it, listen, it would have been cheaper for us and, and more affordable for us to move it to San Diego. San right. Diego is great. We fly everyone from Mexico to Tijuana for 100 bucks a flight and drive them across the border. And it, it, Philadelphia sucks for traveling. I'm pretty yeah. sure, by the way, that I lost a bet by the fact that you guys didn't have to move it to San Diego. But it's been so long that I'm not telling that guy. <laughs> Wait, was that me? Oh, shit. Probably, but We're not going to so, We got yeah, uh, to... It is important for us to uh, to to take it to Philadelphia to yeah. pay homage uh, again, even if it's the twenty seventh anniversary now, not the twenty fifth. But um, that that building's so important. That's one of the other things. Um, I guess you know uh, I I don't know if they fall into the friends of the show category, but guys that you know of uh, Dos Hermanos Lucha uh, who uh, really do a, a big part in trying to preserve 
the legacy of mm-hmm. some of the the masks and the gear and those um, guys are cool. They only yeah. buy authentic. They only buy masks and gear that they can truly trace the exact events that they were worn on, and they yeah. find photographic and video evidence of of it being there. Uh, and so they're bringing, uh, a, you know, museum quality display of a lot of early uh, Ray and Psychosis and Hoovy uh, masks and gear, and so they've got some Penta and Phoenix stuff and some other stuff. So. Um, that's a whole nother reason. And they went out and they had, uh, the, the Busio family who back in the day was making Hoovy and psychosis and Ray's masks. Mm-hmm. Um, they went out and they had a brand new by them, a classic ECW style Hoovy mask made and a classic ECW wow. style psychosis mask made. That they're going to raffle off, uh, <gasps> to fans. How you buy tickets? Yeah. The convention. You have to go by one. Oh. Wow! Yeah. I might oh. now. I'm, now I'm gotta, <laughs> now yeah. I got to spend five hundred dollars on gas to drive to Philly for that. Just I'm gonna oh. Venmo you for uh, for raffle tickets. All right, <laughs> I'll 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 put you in. I mean, but if you win, I don't, I'm I don't even think it's pay. It. I think I think they've got a gimmick at their table. They got they got other ways to qualify. There there's no money. You just got to get yourself in the front door. Just and, then, do it uh, and take a left handed body slam, and then you can uh, get a ticket. <laughs> That makes perfect sense. You know what? I'll I'll tell you what. I got to talk to those guys, too, because the show that I might be doing in the near future is all about the world's most whatever collections of things. And I can tell you more about it offline one of these days. But if I get this particular show, um, there's already been some talk of doing a wrestling themed episode. And I, of course, have to get my Lucha Libre peoples in there that have real collections. Beef loaf. Um, I'll do it. But we're only filming in Los Angeles. I was going to say, does your budget allow you to find? That doesn't sound like a show. That's um, you know, you know, know. My, my budget Nailed might allow me stuff, to do. Dude. My budget might allow me to do some interstitials overseas, where like I send a cameraman and and a page of notes of what to do, <laughs> but not my, not the whole crew or the star of the show or any of that shit. That'll send never me. I'll, I'll go film it. So yeah. Now. So here's the question, uh, and Pablo's yeah. asking this one: Is this going to happen? Where's 2023? What's the next one? I know you haven't gotten through this one yet, but are you going to do it again? That's a good question. <laughs> let, let, let me, right, right now, all my focus has been on getting on the airplane July, uh, June 13th and heading home. Uh, and, and, and that's, uh, listen, honestly, um, Ruben and I would love to make San Diego an every other year stop mm-hmm. for Expo yeah. Lucha um, for, for all sorts of reasons. But, um, you know, a lot of it's going to depend. You know, we're 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 trying to turn this into a real business in and of itself. Uh, you know, so working with corporate sponsors or trying to get corporate sponsors on board, the right partners, uh, and, and so sometimes that's going to dictate where things go. But um, absolutely, I mean, like even though neither of us live in San Diego now, Ruben left San Diego right after the last Expo Lucha, uh, not because he was getting chased out of town. He just Moved to Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, San Diego's home for Mass Republic. It will always be home for Mass Republic. And yeah, we we do hope that in 2023, right? We we being completely honest, uh, we actually were looking at whether we could return to uh, San Diego later this year. But the venue, uh, there's just so, there's just so much uncertainty still because of COVID um, that we just couldn't make the. Uh, we couldn't get the commitments we needed to be able to start planning. Uh, right, and that's the other oh. hard thing about this, which is why this is amazing. It's like you keep planning it, but what are you planning it based on? You you have to base it on on COVID futures and, yeah. and pandemic futures of like, what are the levels going to be here? What can we get insured? Who can actually come? How many people we can we put in the room? And it changes. Yeah. Look, bro, I did that TV show in the middle of the pandemic. We lost entire cities. Where they were just like, no, you can't film here. And then we did other ones like Savannah, did Georgia, you wanna... that would not let us B roll outside. Think about how counter that is to what we know about the pandemic now. They would let us go inside and pack some people into a place and film, but they wouldn't let us walk on the street with a camera outside in the lovely streets of Savannah, Georgia. It's just so weird. Like planning any of event right now, it's a totally different ball game than it was three years ago. Yeah, the, the Do you want to show that... the promo, Justin? No, we've uh, seen the promo, haven't we? Yeah. Nominated yeah. for four Emmys, by the way. Oh, all right. Right. Nice, nice, nice. And the other thing that we that we were up against, and we're still constantly up against, is the visa situation, right? right? Because the pandemic really slowed down the ability for talent to get visas, and 
we can't do we we won't to us the Expo Lucha brand means we are bringing dozens of talents from Mexico. Otherwise, it's right. an indie show, right? Why why call it? But, I, but I've heard oh. that you guys are personally responsible for for everything positive that's happened with visas for athletes from Mexico. Now. Yeah, ever. Yes, now, <laughs> but because uh, it wasn't Lucha know. Underground, <laughs> they certainly didn't do anything <laughs> for that situation. Uh, yeah, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like now, like it took us until just now. To basic, and we still have some that are that are not done yet. We're 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 fighting. The Kingo one of us. Uh, the Kingo, he's been having. Is he still having problems? He's the last one. I'm right? fairly certain he's just cursed when it comes to visa at this point. That yeah. it has been it is it has been almost a comedy of errors for that guy. Unfortunately, um, so like you're a Viking, we're not letting you in. Yeah, no, no. So we'll we'll, we'll see what happens, but um, yeah. So so that was one of the other things, and and and. Hopefully that situation doesn't get hard again, because um, because that will that would impact future expos. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. But uh, I'm getting on a plane uh, Thursday night, heading to Philadelphia. Uh, we're gonna have a huge weekend, and uh, yeah, I hope to see uh, hope to see people who are listening there. And uh, if any of the three of you decide to show up, uh, knock on the back door, and uh, we'll let you in. Yeah, he said he's gonna let me in the back door, Byron. Let's do you it. Got him to say it. <laughs> He's like, oh my god, I hate this show. Why did I ever let this show on my network? Anyway, <laughs> thank you, you so right much. Now. Thanks so much, Kevin, for stopping by. We we're happy. Uh, it, it was part of the reason why we wanted to come on this yeah. week again and, and appreciate bring it. bring our show back to life to help keep your show with all the life that it has going. And also, we got to talk about MJF next because that's fucking awesome. You still haven't gotten to MJF yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. oh no. I can't I I had to talk about Cody first cuz Co- I think Cody won. Right. Right. Yeah. I think Cody is the overall winner of ridiculous things in wrestling right now that are going to matter in the future and MJF is a close number 2 and we're going to talk about that giant right. number 2 well, right now. I will uh I will tune in uh and and listen from afar. So Thank you so much Kevin. Thanks for being Thank our overlord. Is. I would Let's say see. our savior, but Casey would be mad because that's him. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Cheers, brother.